All right, everyone, apologies in advance for the fact that the audio sounds terrible on this video. It will on all subsequent videos as well. Something's wrong with the webcam. I've already tried troubleshooting, reinstalling. I've tried both uh, microphones. Nothing works, so I I'm probably going to have to scrap everything, like literally get rid of the two microphones, the webcam, and get everything brand new, reinstall everything totally fresh. Might even have to reinstall everything on the fucking computer. And I have an Alienware, so the fans in the back sound like a jet engine, which can have uh, you know, ramifications for recording quality. Uh, but we've got to talk about the Data Society hit piece again. I watched uh, Computing Forever's video yesterday, and that got me thinking, well, you know, I should recover this because some of that stuff is a pretty good point. Actually, I didn't delve into all of the meat and bones of the actual article. Once I saw the map, I started laughing uncontrollably. Uh, and so it was difficult to continue. It's a hit piece. It's 99% defamatory. It's not real. And, and anyone who's a fan or, or a subscriber or whatever of any of the people on the list probably knows that. The problem is, of course, that this is not meant for the consumption of, of YouTubers. This is meant for the consumption of the angry, perpetually offended, pink-haired folks. Which I guess is, the whole point is to try to generate a panicked lynch mob that will pressure YouTube to, to basically suppress this massive number of, of content creators that have a very large audiences. Now, specifically because we're out competing, you know, people that the Data Society is hooked to. Like uh, the Open Society Foundation, oh yeah, <laughs> or the New York Times. Some of the donors that help them fund their so-called non-profit or whatever the hell it is. Uh, but here's the thing. When I looked at the, uh, the map of individuals there, what you're actually seeing is simply what they're afraid of. I, I happen to agree with computing forever. I think that we're winning and that's why they're doing hit pieces and stuff. It's just like when the Wall Street Journal came out and said, well, PewDiePie this or the PewDiePie that. They went after Infowars and stuff. It's a preface to try to suppress people in some way or another. Could be deplatforming, fiscally or off the platforms entirely. Could be algorithmic manipulation change in TOS, you know, or simply general harassment. You've got to understand one of the things that the social justice warriors like to do is simply mob people. They try to get you, they'll try to uh, make you feel sorry or something, get you to apologize. Then the rest of the sharks smell blood in the water. My uh, advice, of course, is never apologize unless there's a really damn good compelling reason. And then never apologize anyway if the person trying to get you to apologize has like soy face or something. Not a great idea. But when you look at this map, what you actually see is that content creation in these anti-left political circles, and it's not all you know, strictly anti-left, it's a general nexus with multiple sort of loose facets that intertwine people. What you actually see is diversity. And this is what people like Becca Lewis, the author of this work, are technically afraid of. They're afraid that people will realize that, no, it isn't just white, straight, Christian males that oppose globalism. That's essentially what it's about. There are people on this list that transgress every single one of those categories. Like, uh, I'm certainly not a Christian. You know, my username probably gives that away. <laughs> uh, Sargon is not right wing in any way. Uh, I don't even know if he's a Christian. Who fucking cares? Some of these people are like pagan or atheistic. The, the gay people on this list, one individual being transgendered. Some of these individuals are certainly not white. I, I think Candace Owens, Tree of Logic, some black guy, I, I think they're of a different race. There are also several Jewish individuals on this list. The lexicon of anti-censorship, anti-globalist abuse, the abusive side of globalism, anti-authoritarianism after a fashion. Now, some of these people are you know, certainly libertarians. I might be. Many of these people, like Richard Spencer, he's not a libertarian, but we certainly coincide on the issue of corporate censorship. I don't want corporate censorship any more than he does, not because I agree with him in spirit on political issues, but because I simply happen to have come to the conclusion that corporations shouldn't be trusted to censor people. I used to think that that opinion generally was left-leaning. These days, it seems that it's labeled far right. I'm not exactly sure how that happens. Supposedly, there's a free market despite massive tax subsidies and intervention in Silicon Valley. I'm not sure how that happened either. This map, though, 
Computing Forever is right, and this map displays what specifically they're afraid of. They're afraid of our diversity. <laughs> they're literally afraid of the fact that we're not hegemonic and that we're not scary. Look, the page after page, I didn't even read the last, you know, parts of this report because it's like, fucking too long. It's like boring. Uh, and it's a hit piece, so it's like, you know, you know, what other stupid shit are you going to say? It's page after page at the latter end of the report talking about, oh, while these people are part of basically a grand conspiracy to radicalize your children, but look, they try to be normal, like they don't record in a, in a multi-million dollar studio. They don't drive around in a limo. They act like normal people. No, it couldn't be that we actually are normal people. Like I, I'm sitting here, I'm living with my family, I'm recording in what used to be my bedroom, it's now my home office. There's no conspiracy here. I, th I think that you need to take a Xanax or something, uh, author of this article, because you're starting to get a little bit too nervous about things. You sound exactly like some temperance era moralist clutching their pearls and worrying that other people would have a drink. You sound exactly like a McCarthyist making th shit up out of thin air about your, your you know, ideological and economic and political enemies. Oh, secret commies, reds under the bed, oh my God. You know, through three steps of separation, you're associated with the Rosensteins. You must be a communist. Or the satanic panic. It's like, during the satanic panic, do you think most of the people that were persecuted then were actually devil worshippers? Now, 99% of them weren't. They shouldn't have, nobody should have been persecuted. But when you get Ozzy Osbourne, who's a lifelong Christian, up there on the, what was it, Satan's Underground, the, the um, what's his name, Geraldo Rivera program, that they eventually, years later, had to apologize for, actually. And they're like, oh, well, you know, you basically, you worship the devil, and you talk about graves and Satan and stuff. Do you understand who you sound like? It's like uh, when Holt comes out, and for the second time now he's come out and sort of proclaimed uh, his responsibility for deplatforming Info as well. Despite the fact that that's bunk, uh, for the most part, it's a really good career move short term. Long term, it's going to put you in the same category as 80s televangelists and Joe McCarthy. You do realize that, right? So, so enjoy the short-term gain for long-term pain. The YouTube creator community very wisely is doing the opposite. By the way, when you draw all of these people together and you get us all talking about the same issue so that our audience is sort of bouncing around anyway, you're actually creating a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. See, I didn't even know about some of these creators' existence, but I do now. Guess who I subscribed to? People on this list, because I know they must be decent people. They must be interesting to listen to if you're afraid of them. And any time that you claim that through one step of separation, Ben Shapiro is a gateway drug to Richard Spencer, you are insane. It is insane to speculate that. Look, look at uh, the Data Society, the, the list that Paul Joseph Watson put on there of people that sort of donated to and supported the Data Society. Again, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Open Society, UNICEF, New York Times, some of these other groups. If you were to take Data Society, put it on a map in the middle, and draw connections to a couple dozen of those groups, and then look at who those groups are associated with, you'd find some real winners. It's just like Keith Ellison supports Antifa, which, you know, he literally did on Twitter. Antifa is now being implicated in helping to sponsor and... and has ties to in the most tangible sense economic ties to uh some communist group in southeast asia i think it was malaysia the philippines or something that's literally listed by the world as a terrorist organization so does that mean that the dnc is two steps removed from literal terrorism through this you know if, if you look at uh, the fsa it's only one step removed from them so it's even worse i'm sure we won't be seeing that map anytime soon somebody should use this uh software to make a map of the data society and it's it's sort of sponsoring uh, groups and who they're tied to. I bet you can find all sorts of weird stuff on there. Abusive corporations, predatory banks, terrorist organizations, criminal figures. I bet you can find all of those. You see when you play 5 degrees of separation, you can literally <laughs> you can literally concoct a connection between any two entities in this world. It's possible to do so. It's like when they play that uh what is it, Five Degrees of Hitler game with Wikipedia. You start with one article and you try to, to get to Hitler's page, essentially.
which always entails getting to Germany or World War II or, or something, you know, sort of associated with that. And you can do it with literally any article that has more than five or six links. Sometimes you get stumped because the only thing that one article will link to is a few stubs. And so you've already used up two or three of your steps. And you're like, well, you know, I'm, I'm now I'm on, you know, the page for roosters or something. Uh, and it becomes difficult. The data society map is just a map of what they fear. They fear us actually being connected. Now, I've never suggested there should be any sort of hierarchical system involved with content creation. But what I have strenuously suggested for two years is we need to create a non-aggressive sort of confederated movement. That is, we stand together. All, all this means is ideological. Don't support censoring one another. Don't try to censor one another. When one person is censored, the rest supports them irregardless of their ideology. That's all it means. Literally all it means. It's possible to do. By the way, when hit pieces like this are made that are clearly defamatory, we might consider our potential legal response. We might begin to consider potentially launching a legal battle because it might become necessary. <laughs> Look, this is an attempt to destroy our livelihoods. It's also defamatory. Some of the things said here are clearly objectively wrong. When you have a report talking about the reactionary YouTube and you've got people on there that are liberals and libertarians, it's pretty fucking cut and dry. It's like Holt's first article there where he made his claim to fame by defaming people. He had to re-edit that article to make it more clear, because he didn't do this originally, that somebody like myself or Stefan Molnoux isn't actually a Nazi identitarian. Wow! You mean that you, instead of issuing a retraction, you just edited your article. At least it was edited. It's a bunch of bullshit. Computing forever is fundamentally right. I think it goes beyond... I don't think that this is an attempt to gull YouTube into deplatforming us. I think that this is an attempt to stir up simply more frenzy. It's part of the same moral panic. This looks like the sort of thing you would have seen written back in the 50s, like in the McCarthy era or something, about how your neighbor might be a communist because they, wear, they like that red shirt they wear a little bit too much. It's basically the same fucking shit. It's like, oh, your friend is a liberal and he's a friend of some socialist and that socialist sort of gets along with that commie over there. Therefore, you are a commie too. It's the same fucking thing. Unfortunately, a lot of people are always going to be ignorant. They're, they're not in the sort of YouTube thing or the content creation thing. It goes well beyond YouTube. That's just a, a focus here. And what I'd like to see, somebody needs to take the same program they used and put the data and 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 put the data society at the middle and look at their sponsors and create a web i'd love to see that and separately do one where you focus on like some of the big leftist names on youtube you know uh you'd think of kyle kalinsky the young turk some of these others put them at the middle and create a web of their connections and appearances and stuff and then try to merge it with this so-called right-wing youtube that you've concocted in your minds I bet you'll find a lot of overlap. That's because it's just content creation of a political nature. Literally all it is. And some of these people aren't even primarily political. Bunty King. Yes, Bunty King is a gateway drug to the Nazi party. I'm sure that makes a whole lot of sense. That's about all. Peace out.